Some of you may be looking at the background here and saying, what the heck, this isn't your sports channel, Jeff. And you're, you're absolutely right. It's just a, admittedly felt like I was, I was just feeling too lazy to sit there, sit there and pick up everything and take the setup from one room to another room. Um, so here's the background for this one. But anyways, it is time for the weekly OTRS Central Q&A. Uh, thank you to one and all again that follow the show on Twitter at OTRS Central is the Twitter handle. Make sure you follow it. Also, make sure you smash that subscribe button and click the bell. What the hell? So that way you're notified when any future videos come up on this channel. Um, and if you want to participate and have your questions answered potentially in future Q&A videos, uh, you can go tweet them and there you go. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Wall fan 531 asks, if Biggie wins the Royal Rumble, does he move to Raw or does he beat Roman at WrestleMania? Um, if he wins the Rumble, I'm sorry, but I'm not having Roman lose anytime soon. Like, I want this to be a year-plus title reign, and I actually think that is the appropriate thing to do. Um, so you're getting into this potential really sketchy spot of Big E, to me, is the guy that should be the Rumble winner. But then... Are you going to take the belt off of Drew and flip Biggie back over to Raw anyways? Um, you know, that's probably the logical thing to do at this point. Because otherwise, having, I'm not taking that strap off of Roman. Like, the Tribal Chief gimmick is really working. There is no reason right now to go away from it. So it's that ultimate quandary of, you don't want to have Biggie win the Rumble and not, not win at WrestleMania, but then at the same point in time, what do you do? Especially if you're pointing towards potentially Roman taking on The Rock at WrestleMania, which is the match you have to do 100 out of 100 times for so many different reasons. La1214 underscore UN asks, If Punk wouldn't have done the 2011 Pipe Bomb promo, do you think wrestling as a whole and how it is viewed from the outside of the wrestling bubble wouldn't have changed that much in the past nine years? Um, yeah, I don't think it changed at all outside of the bubble. Fewer and fewer people are watching. Fewer and fewer people care. Fewer and fewer people that are in the business are actually truly mainstream household names. Um, that punk promo in the grand scheme of things didn't do shit. It was a missed opportunity. Uh, but it didn't do really do crap. It didn't change anything. It just drove away more wrestling fans. MC17 Clark. Which ECW wrestler do you think was screwed over in the WWF more? Taz or Raven? Um, ooh. at least got some element of a form of a push and then got a long-term commentary career out of him, himself. Raven was the guy that was infinitely more screwed because he was just largely relegated to the hardcore division and that's pretty much it. Kieran Chase. I know Hogan's ego wouldn't have allowed it, but how do you think WrestleMania 5 had been built up in match, build up in match, if he turned heel instead of Savage? No. Vince wasn't feeling it. Hogan wouldn't have been feeling it. Wouldn't have worked at all. At that time, Savage had to be the heel. Even though you can take a look at the style of Hogan's matches and the, the crying when somebody actually, oh my God, beat him. The raking on people's backs and the poking people in the eyes. Like, who's the heel here? Just saying. But I, I get what you're saying overall. No. The dynamics where the mega, mega powers explode 100% had to be the way that they were. Byron Andreas, when our truth was serious in TNA, that's round the truth. Killings, damn it. Did you like him better? Do you think if he should use that same gimmick in modern WWE, uh, would that make a WWE championship worthy? Let's be real here. They've had so many jobbers and jabronis be world champions in that company anyways. What the hell difference does it make? At least our truth can entertain some people. Outside of just having to do a match. Um... When he was Ron the Truth Killings, did I like him better? Yes. Admittedly, yes. Um, do I think he should use that same gimmick in modern WWE? No. You know, he's got his spot. I don't always like just how silly, stupid he's made to look and makes himself to look. Like, there's comedy and then there's uh, comedy. Um, but I miss the old Ron the Truth Killings in TNA, that is for sure. Jack asks, why did Spike TV use TNA as a plot device for Bellator when TNA got double the ratings they did? Uh, that was a way at the time to really try to 
counter what was going on with the UFC and Spike TV obviously wanted to get into the MMA business and they had a vested interest in Bellator. So it certainly makes sense to sit there and leverage, you know, the built-in programming that you already have in place that draws a decent amount of viewers to your network in TNA to try and build up other shows that you have, other products that you have. That's why WWE has always been able to find a home on over the years, whether it be with USA or uh, the old TNN, Nash the Nashville Network, which became Spike TV. Like, they were leveraging wrestling in the audience that would come with wrestling to try and build their network. So that absolutely makes sense. Absolutely makes sense. But then you start to wonder, why did you care about Bellator more than you did uh, TNA? Like, it is a valid question. It's a legitimate concern. And certainly, I think, a valid criticism of them. Um, Rick Styles, 1985. Is Sasha versus Bianca Belair the next big woman's feud? Is it? And if I looked at that, how much does that really excite you? I don't know how much that would really excite me. I guess that would be an answer for the viewers here. Like, who is, what is the next big feud in WWE in terms of the ladies that would really, really interest you, that would really, really captivate you, that would really, really get you emotionally invested? I don't know if Sasha and Bianca's it. Because I'm sorry, like, I look at Bianca Belair and I look at Sasha and I'm saying to myself, you know, Bianca just screams like legit badass or Sasha Banks screams more wannabe boss badass I just I'm not buying it like if you even if you were saying as much as I don't like Charlotte if you were saying is Charlotte versus Bianca Belair the next great uh, woman's feud I would be much more inclined to agree with that and understand that and the principles behind that than I would with Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair I don't see that uh, WTF is a Manix ass. The Rock versus the Tribal Chief has to be the main event of WrestleMania 37. I mean, it just has to be, right? Yes, with contingencies. If you have no fans at WrestleMania 37, or you have a very, 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 very small amount of fans there, I don't know if I want to blow that there. Like, there are some COVID impacts here. And I think COVID in some ways can potentially impact how you book WrestleMania. Like, I'm not going to invest the money to bring in Rock, you know, that obvious seven-figure-plus payout to get him to do some TV shots in the weeks leading up to WrestleMania to appear at WrestleMania and then be doing it in the Thunderdome. I'm not doing that. Like, I want that to be where you have a venue full of fans or... A lot of fans to at least the point where it actually feels WrestleMania worthy. Because no matter what anybody wants to say, not having the fans there absolutely hurts professional wrestling. It kills professional wrestling, kills the vibe of professional wrestling. You got this big moment, like you got The Rock and Roman Reigns going to the big standoff, or they have this big moment, and there's silence. Crickets. It just kills it. If we were in a normal environment. Yes, everything you should be doing is building towards rock and roll and WrestleMania, period. There is no other acceptable alternative. That is the match you must do. If you don't do that, then you would come back and say, well, since Paul Heyman's aligned with Roman Reigns, you're doing Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Uh, but, you know, we've also done that match before several times. But, again, the dynamics are different. So with the dynamics being different, it provides a new element. It could certainly work. But again, do you really want to do that? Well, maybe you do because it's Brock and Roman with no fans in there. But in this case, would you really want to do that? You know, I, I don't know. Um, but the, the, the Rock and Roman, if you could get enough fans to be able to safely be in the physical arena for the, the stadium for WrestleMania 37, then that has to be the match. That has to be the main event. And you build everything backwards from there. Mojo Jojo 1104. Favorite WWE pay per view from 2003 besides WrestleMania? Why did you pick 2003 of all years? You want me to go back 17 years in time? That's what we want to do. Hmm. 
maybe try to remember the stuff. Damn, I'm getting old. I think I'm getting old and I'm not as emotionally invested as much as I used to be in wrestling. Um, I don't even think the WrestleMania was all that great from that year. I think I had some notable marquee matches, but like Austin and The Rock was a dud to me. I know there were certain health considerations there for Austin, but you know, yay, Austin finally put The Rock over when neither one of them is going to be around long term and it didn't matter, so who gives a shit? You know, just like I wasn't huge on a lot of the crap in 2003. I'll just put it that way. A Chrysler official. Does your false god Ugg like it rough, considering he is liking some interesting tweets? Number one, BS Steamer! Number two, how dare you 100 hail hunters for your blasphemy? Why do you go out of your way, sir, to deny what is self evident? It doesn't mess up your belief system. You just adjust your belief system. Um, does he like it rough? Well, you know, back in the day, you used to hear about <laughs> hear about how he liked to go to the back door to China, <laughs> which means ugh, we're going in the rear door, ugh, uh -huh. <laughs> flip it over and play in the mud, ugh. Um. You, you guarantee that that's a that's probably a nasty dude who does some freaky shit. Yeah, why wouldn't you if you're a Triple H? Lord JCW asked, "Would the retribution angle have been a better chance to work if Shane McMahon was the leader?" Now there is something that, on the one hand, you would think, "Oh man, now you got a McMahon involved, and it's Shane, and he's been gone for a while." And da, 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 da. But then you look at the diarrhea that's been the raw underground stuff, and you say, "Well, Shane being involved didn't help that at all. Certainly hasn't." And then you say, "Oh, so we're just basically borrowing from that crappy Ducey invasion angle from 2001, yeah? Because that's gonna pay off, right?" Nah. Maybe it would have had a little bit of a better chance, but I don't think that much, really. I really don't. Uh, little DJ Boy asked, is Randy Orton better than John Cena? Has he surpassed him? Woo! I'm going to answer your question with one statement that in no way actually addresses the question that was asked. This is, this is me being a politician. Is Randy Orton better than John Cena? Has he surpassed him? Well, then there is only one way to find out, isn't there? Now, hear me out. Randy Orton versus, hear me out, John Cena, hear me out, at WrestleMania, hear me out, with Triple H as a special guest referee. Like, the only way you decide this, the only way that you settle this, is at WrestleMania. One on one, 3,000 times, but this one counts. The story is there. The out there. This can work. Randy Orton versus John Cena WrestleMania is the only way to settle the debate. That's the answer to your question. 434. If Brock Lesnar stayed in WWE in 2004, do you think John Cena would have ever become the top guy? Yes. Eventually, he was able to realize the shtick with Brock was a little bit limited, and he probably would eventually would have gotten the fighting bug or something anyways, especially as UFC grew in popularity and there was an opportunity to make money there. Um, he... Brock didn't like traveling. He didn't like to be on the road all the time. So uh, I, eventually John Cena would have become the top guy anyways. Might have just delayed him a little bit, but it would have eventually happened. And that's all four is going to close out this Q&A. Uh, what are some of the biggest things that are wrong with wrestling fans today? Our cynicism, um, but that's merited. Uh, too many wrestling fans are too invested in the moves and the matches. You know, every, I understand everybody's got their preferences, but too many people are too invested in that stuff and not focusing on the other elements that actually make stars and actually really draw money for folks. Um, incredible bias across the board. Like, I go on and on and on with this problem. In fact, it probably should be something I just do a separate video topic on this week. Um, you've actually piqued my interest here, so I'll think about doing that. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching this Q&A. Reminder, go on the channel. You can watch last week's Dynamite review, last week's SmackDown review. And, of course, the big special one, tag, 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 they're coming, they're coming. My retro review series is back, Bound for Glory 2010, a take and a look back 10 years later. Good Lord Almighty. Thanks, everyone. See you later.